Well, it looks like we already have people queuing up, banging at the door, waiting to get in for this webinar. The numbers are really rising at the moment. We've got, oh, just over 60, oh gosh, 66, 72. Uh, definitely uh, increasing. We've got a huge number actually registered this morning. So we're just going to give a few minutes for people to get in. So if we don't start bang on at 10.30, it's not that we're being sort of, you know, uh, lax with this, but again, we just want to get most of the people in before we actually make a start. So welcome to this morning and looking forward uh, to connecting with you. Please, if you have any questions, uh, you say uh, we're going to have the Q&A for questions to, the, to myself. Uh, and also any technical questions that you've got, that is going to be monitored the most. But please do use the chat function to introduce yourself, say who you are, where are you as well? Because it's great, it's really wonderful hearing about where people are actually from, uh, where they're based, where the bedroom is or the kitchen table where they're sat this morning as well. So please do share that. Connect with each other because this is the great opportunity. There's a huge chance to network with fellow fundraisers, uh, across the whole of the UK and even beyond uh, today. So please yeah, make the most of the chat, share your contact details, keep in touch with people. Uh, and again, whilst we'll be going to monitor the questions in the Q&A box uh, and try and deal with as many of those later on, it may be there's questions that you want to ask each other. So again, uh, throughout, if, if I'm mentioning something about uh, contactless collections, if you want to ask uh, into the the chat function you know who are you using for this now that's not going to be a question that I'll be answering but again you know share that knowledge share your contacts share the information or you might say we dealt with these people but never again it was it was a nightmare or we've had a really good relationship with this supplier so again use that as a function to share information keep networking uh, and connecting um, I'm a great believer that fundraising uh, and fundraisers are such a friendly bunch of people uh, and he said it is those networks that we build up over time. So I say, do please connect. Do connect with me as well. You'll find me on LinkedIn and my Twitter handle uh, is at Jolly Jill Jolly. I will just answer the quick question. Uh, I'm not normally going to be monitoring the Q&A box, but uh, until we start, I can just have a quick look at that. But definitely got a, a point in there. The slides won't be circulated afterwards, but all the presentations, uh, today's and the previous four, because this is the fifth in a series of five sessions that we've been doing, um, those are actually available on Ecclesiastical's website. So it's, again, you'll see the address come up in a minute, but it's ecclesiastical.com slash charity fundraising. There's a load of information there. So please, you say, use that. You can find this uh, uh, session will be up as soon as the transfer has been able to happen. But also there's four other sessions up there that are the previous ones. We started this uh, before Christmas and then uh, we did two before Christmas and then we've done uh, a further three. This is uh, the fifth of the series of five. So I do have my hanky ready because it's, uh, it's been a feature in my diary for the last couple of months. Uh, and I know I'm going to miss connecting with you all in the way that we have been doing. But who knows what's around the corner? We're definitely seeing as this is the start of things, not necessarily the end. And it's the start of things in terms of uh, your, your knowledge, uh, but possibly it's the continuation, I say, of where you already are. I know some people we're having on the calls are absolutely brand new into fundraising or they've pivoted from other roles or they've just been asked to carry on and help to generate some money or they're even trustees involved in their charities and again just wanting to widen their knowledge and find out a little bit more so i know for some people it is the start of their fundraising knowledge journey but for lots of other people you're out there it's a continuation you're coming with knowledge hopefully we're adding some more building blocks to it that help you in the day-to-day -day work that you're doing as well as the strategic planning that you're able to do 
and then you say uh, again we can't solve everything we've only got a limited time together uh, on air but we say we'll try and uh, get through quite a lot in terms of things that I'm going to share with you during this session but also then we're going to open up for Q&A so please do make sure you're putting uh, your questions that you hopefully are wanting an answer from me uh, today uh, put those in the Q&A but use the chat function to connect with each other The numbers just seem to have slowed down a little bit at the moment. So I think we've got uh, most people, uh, we're up to oh, well over 300, but I know we've more or less, uh, we were almost 600 signed up. So it is a Tuesday morning. Uh, people have perhaps got other things that have cropped up uh, that's not allowed them uh, to join us today. But as I say, um, please be aware that this recording will actually be available. Just checking. Yeah, we are recording. So <laughs> I thought there's no point saying that if we're not actually recording. So uh, we'll, we'll officially start. We've uh, say just a few minutes past half past, but welcome to the fifth in our series of the webinars that I've been running uh, in association with DSC, the Directory of Social Ta Change and Ecclesiastical. I'm Jill Jolly and Director of Achieve Consultants and Associate Trainer with the DSC. I'm now going to hand over to um, Angus. Um, let's just get this working. <laughs> we're going to right? stop the share because I want, I want Angus's face to come up anyway. So <laughs> I want you to see who Angus is and then we'll go back and, and we'll start the rest of the slides afterwards. Are the slides up, Jill? No, you're going to just say a welcome. Everyone. All right. OK, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, morning, everyone. Sorry. As you can see, we've done five. This is our fifth. We're getting smoother every time-ish. <laughs> um, yeah, morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for coming. Um, as Jill said, this, in some respects, this is a sad day and an exciting day because it is the last in the series. Um, <laughs> excuse me. But we were talking about it's the start, possibly, of your journey as well. Um, Ecclesiastical um, is, a, you know, people just think we're an insurance company, but we're a little bit different. We are actually owned by a charity, uh, so we're much more affiliated to the charity sector. And when we were looking around last year, you've seen the figures in the press, 10 billion shortfall in income, all the rest of it. Uh, we sort of felt a moral imperative to do something to help. Um, and, and that's what today is all about. So we've created the Charity Fundraising Hub, which again, uh, email addresses, uh, website addresses available, but we didn't feel that was enough. Need to do more, need to do, do more to help out the sector. So we talked to our friends at DSC and that is what today is all about. And as I say, this is the fifth, it's been a fantastic series. I wanna thank Jill and all our colleagues, all the people in the background with the tech, um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, now, what we're looking to do is give you the information um, so that you can go out and create your fundraising plans um, and start sort of replacing some of some of that lost funding that you've had. So I just want to say thank you to Jill. Jill's been an absolute fountain of knowledge and she'll be a fountain of knowledge again today. 30 years experience in fundraising and a fellow of Institute of Fundraising as well. Um, so today we're going digital, which is, <laughs> if you think about what where we were 12 months ago, digital was almost this scary, dirty world that nobody wanted to talk about. It's far too difficult. I don't understand it. Let's put it in a box and put it in the cupboard and we'll get to it somewhere down the line. Well, today everything's digital. Um, I even went to a um, charity award ceremony in Northern Ireland that was digital. Um, and you went to the reception, you got shown to your table, you sat with people, you could have a chat with them. And then there was the main guy on the stage handing out the prizes and all the rest of it. You know, that that's kind of just what life's become. Will we ever go back to, to a hotel for these events? I don't know, but, um, but yeah, that's the way things going. It's gonna be ab absolutely critical to the future. And I think we've all got a lot to learn from Jill today. So I just want to say thank you for attending. I hope you get masses of information out of this. And I will now hand you over to Jill. 
Great. Thanks very much indeed. Let's just get the slides back up again uh, so that uh, we can start sharing again. So uh, let's go back into share function. There we are. So there we are. So that is the, the website as well that I mentioned before. And I uh, say just to re-emphasize what um, Angus has just been uh, saying that this uh, webinar will be on there, the recording of it, uh, as well as the other four that we've uh, uh, done so far. So yes, yes, you've already seen me, but that was just in case we didn't uh, sort of put the, the, the screens down. Uh, so yes, I am Jill Jolly and can never be miserable. So definitely, even though it's a bit damp where I am this morning, but the other person who uh, is, is helping us this morning, uh, Kathy Shimin, has been my great assistant. She will be looking at all your Q&As uh, and actually firing the questions at me. We're also joined by the lovely Ian, uh, and Ian is also, Ian Pembridge is from the DSC and he's actually also helping. So if you get an answer back in uh, the chat or, or even in the Q&A, it's either coming from Cathy or Ian. So a big thank you to them for actually helping out because it's, uh, it's difficult to try and sort of uh, share things uh, with you, but also read the chat function or the Q&A. So uh, welcome and thank you to, to both of those. So yes, uh, just to, again, just to re-emphasize, please use the chat function, as I say, to connect, tell us where you are, share things with each other, uh, network, uh, and as I say, make those connections, but also use the Q&A function for any questions that you want to be answered later, but also if you have any tech issues. Please feel free, as I say, to also add in to that Q&A, but just make a note that it's, it's not for answering today, but areas that you might want uh, other uh, supporting, because you never know, uh, we may be able to do something about that. Uh, but it will definitely, in terms, of, uh, in terms of planning for things for the future, whether it's DSC, whether it's ecclesiastical, whether it's in partnership, whatever. But again, we want to hear from you if there's things that you still want to hear about. So uh, use that as a function. You will get a survey uh, and ask to complete that after today as well by attending. Use that as well to share anything you'd like to find out more about. But today we are going digital. So uh, again, we're just gonna be sharing some research findings. Uh, I know I've done this in previous sessions, but again, it's just so you've got some background if you're suggesting internally to people, we should be doing something. Very often it's not just because you thought it was a wet Tuesday morning and came up with this bright idea, but again, you've got something to back it up. So again, I want to share a few things, but also give you the sources of where I've got sort of uh, information or where you can find other uh, findings. I'm going to talk about what's meant by digital and as I say I'm sure some people are perhaps feeling a bit worried about this oh my god it's a bit techie uh, am I techie but you say I think some of you will be surprised you're already doing things that we think are definitely we're classing as digital nowadays uh, and also again I want to share some ideas and examples hopefully just to inspire you uh, not necessarily to copy although copy is a good form of it, uh, flattery uh, is imitations the good form of flattery but just also just help you to think through things. And that's why I think by sharing examples, it just thinks, well, that would have worked for us, but my goodness, uh, you know, it triggers. It's that thought process that sometimes helps to trigger. And then, as I've said, at the end, we're going to do a QA and a session as well. Uh, but I know there's lots on the call uh, this morning. So, you know, please be, be patient. And if we don't get to your question, it's not that we didn't want to. And I know Kathy tries to bundle a few up together that are very similar. So don't ask anything really techy. We've not got the time to go into that sort of detail. Uh, and again, it's probably going to turn everybody else off. So we tend to concentrate on things that uh, will be of general interest or there's several people asking the same sort of question. So just to give you, but stick your questions in and hopefully we'll be able to deal with as many of those that we can. So what's it all about? Well, you know, uh, 2020 was a, a very strange year. Uh, talk about uh, understatement, but definitely in terms of fundraising and charities, we definitely saw uh, rapid shifts in behavior of, of donors and supporters. And so again, there's some research reports there that are highlighted because they do provide a, a very valuable insight into the changes and the impact that this is all having on in terms of supporters. So uh, they're all vital so that charities can plan their fundraising activities, taking into account, you know, what donors and supporters are responding to at the moment. 
So, uh, you know, some key facts that come out of the NTU's uh, Pulse Autumn Survey, which uh, came out in October. So the Zen, uh, the Z generation, uh, you know, this is uh, those 18 to 24 year olds. And so many times I talk to charities who previously have kept saying, we want to get more younger supporters. Well, goodness, you know, uh, they're starting to give, uh, they are starting to get engaged with charities. So we definitely need to make sure we're engaging with this audience. And this is where digital work, we're talking in the language, using the communication tools that are very familiar to them and things that they're using. But it's not just young people as we're gonna talk about later, but it is a great way of actually uh, tapping into uh, that Generation Z, those younger supporters, and they are supporting charities. Also, you say we're definitely seeing that think local, local causes are definitely rising in importance. So we need to tap into this trend. So even if you're a national charity, it's about focusing uh, and segmenting your market markets, uh, segmenting your audiences and thinking about the geography and giving them a local message, even if you're a, a national charity. Also, if you're international, again, it's about who else is supporting in a local area and making people feel they're part of a tribe, a, a term that we'll come back to again. And digital brand, your brand in the digital world is, is important so that we want people to remember who you are so that they don't just give and forget. Again, we're going to talk in this session about how very often sometimes it's the person who's doing the asking, it's not necessarily the cause that's motivating. But once we've got them on board, we want to engage and make sure we do get a connection. So is it something that you can actually strengthen uh, with uh, your brand so it does become uh, pretty memorable? So a few other key facts, which again are really vital in terms of this particular area of fundraising, but you know, uh, there's organizations who are sort of, you know, surviving and, and even doing well, you know, so again, I do talk unfortunately to quite a few charities who are struggling, they've seen a big loss of income, but you know, others are seeing increases of income. It may be their flavor of the month because they're doing things very much at the front line in terms of uh, COVID delivery, delivering to patients or families, supporting, uh, you know, uh, this uh, roles within the pandemic. But also, again, uh, many organizations and individuals are starting to realize it's wider than that and other charities are needing support. But 44% of uh, organizations who were questioned as part of the Blackboard and the Institute of Fundraising uh, survey uh, and the report you say is, is down at the bottom. Uh, but 44% of organizations were found to be willing to innovate and try new things. And you know what they said about the dinosaurs, uh, they didn't uh, you know, move on. There was uh, necessarily, are we into evolution or revolution? But we do have to change, otherwise we will be the dinosaurs and become extinct. 6% of respondents uh, said that they'd done some form of virtual fundraising during the pandemic with over three quarters using it for the first time. So if you've not started yet, you know, there's no time like the present, but also again, I'm sure uh, most organizations have done something that we will class as virtual. And again, I'm going to define that later on. But also overall, 64% uh, of respondents uh, found that virtual fundraising was a great way to attract new supporters. So obviously over time we, we do lose supporters, but we're always looking to retain and we're going to talk about using digital to actually help with that retainment, but also in terms of acquiring new supporters as well. So I think uh, definitely, uh, and that's what this slide's about, is just, yes, we do need to be thinking about fundraising in a virtual world. So where do we start? Well, what is virtual fundraising? Well, again, in terms of preparing for this, I, I've done a bit of research myself and tried to find some definitions, but it's really interesting how lots of different uh, people and organizations define it as something slightly different. So here we are with one from, from UNICEF. So it's about a way to raise funds for the causes you care about whilst the current lockdown measures are in place. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting because you say lots of organizations were starting to do things in the virtual arena even before uh, lockdown, or at least doing things in a digital way. Uh, so this is it. So are we talking virtual? Are we talking digital? Again, we tend to interchange those words. But also you say, uh, again, we've got another one. Um, there's definitely, I say, an element here. Uh, COVID-19 restrictions are putting a pause on most face-to-face -face interactions. 
well, like I say, I, 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 it's lovely. I, I love to see people online, but I'm starting to forget when I saw a real person. Although I say my, my window where I'm sat most of the day actually looks out onto the front of my uh, garden. And then I've got a road and a footpath and it's the main footpath that goes through my village. So I do see real people that go past the house, but I don't talk to them, you say, because they're outside and I'm in. Uh, but it definitely is a way that overall we can connect. We can have interaction. We can inform, we can encourage, we can motivate, we can inspire, we can ask as well. We can thank, we can inform and update as well. So using the tools that are now available to us is a great way to do our fundraising. But it's also a great way to, to maintain support, as I've mentioned, as well as to attract uh, new audiences during these tough times. Uh, but definitely, I think it's something, uh, and I know uh, Angus mentioned in his introduction, you know, will we ever go back to what we were before? And I think this is where we're going to end up with, with some sort of, uh, uh, you know, mixed model. We're going to be doing things, because again, you know, I used to be forever jumping on a plane, jumping on a train, jumping on the car, in the car to go to places. And sometimes you say it was only for a two hour meeting. Uh, and sometimes these things can happen in a virtual arena. Uh, so, uh, but also there's other times when sometimes you say that face-to-face -face contact will be important, but at the moment that can't happen. So we are using those substitutes. So he's definitely here to stay. Um, and as we've already said that, you know, 60% of charities did some form of, of virtual fundraising during the first lockdown. Um, he say, uh, there's lots of, of, look at those figures. In terms of 150 virtual events, it enabled 1.8 million participants to actually raise 60 million pounds. So if we're not convinced about the value of a virtual, I think you should be now when you've heard those figures. 45% of those were new events, but also 38 were pivoted, things that were already planned and then waited to actually make it work in this uh, virtual arena. 82% were physical activities uh, with 11% of actually those live streaming. 5% uh, raised more than a million pounds. 78% raised less than 100,000 with the median. So you remember your maths, that's not the average, but the most likely amount was 33,000 pounds. So again, organizations are raising big bucks, but organizations of all sorts of shapes and sizes are raising money through this real essential tool that's there. So what are the tools that are out there for us? Well, again, you know, we said before things changed in uh, 2020 uh, and I certainly become, became aware of Zoom. I don't know about you, but, you know, before uh, last year, definitely before last, last March, I thought Zoom was, you know, an ice, uh, an ice lolly that I used to buy as, as, a, as a child very often, perhaps, you know, when we popped into a garage. Uh, to get some petrol or is that in my village our, our garage is also uh, a, a local shop as well so um but it really took her off as people were combined uh, to their confined to their homes uh, and it's definitely been something that's allowed people to stay in touch with day-to-day -to -day lives you know um i, I regularly talk to my mum i've had two uh new members of the family arrive during uh, lockdown uh, sort of since all this started uh so i've been able to see them as daddy daddy weenie babies but uh, obviously there's there's other products of, around I, I need to sort of say this you know obviously there's google meet that you might use an awful lot ms teams Go to whether it's go to meeting, go to webinar, but I think overall, especially in um, you know a personal environment, uh, you know it does seem to be Zoom is the one, uh, and a big thank you to Zoom who very often you say uh, the forty minute free, uh, which is is great. You know we don't even need to have a subscription. The forty minute free uh, often does get extended. I know uh, allowed me to play Monopoly with my sister down in Cornwall over the Christmas break as well. So looking at those figures, you know, just between January and mid-March, so we weren't really into the pandemic real big time, but just in that sort of short space of time between January and mid-March last year, uh, Zoom usage increased by 67%. But, you know, the UK government uses Zoom to actually hold cabinet meetings and all sorts of things. Uh, and it's also used by 90,000 schools in loads of countries around the world to enable children 
to still get lessons remotely. I know it could well be uh, your bandwidth is starting to struggle because possibly some of you who are homeschooling, uh, possibly there are kids at home are about to connect onto a Zoom lesson. But as I say, many people are using Zoom. Uh, our target audiences are definitely using it. And for lots of people who are on the call, your primary uh, audience uh, for uh, supporters are actually older people. And don't think, goodness, you know, we can't interact with them through uh, technology. My goodness, there's again, loads and loads of figures out there. Uh, and, you know, uh, in the social economic uh, income groups that we're lo looking at, uh, you know, most of, of under the 65, uh, sorry, most of the under 85 year olds are actually on it. But, you know, my dad's 88. I was having a Zoom conversation with him at the weekend. Uh, so there's plenty of those over uh, that 88 as well. But also friends and family are actually helping them to connect. They know they've not seen, uh, you know, all the members of their family or the friends. Uh, so, again, it's a great way to connect. I know some are using FaceTime, but again, it's just people are using the technology and getting used to seeing people who are actually on a screen. I know sometimes, unfortunately, people with Alzheimer's or various forms of dementia really struggle to understand it. But I also do worry about some of the younger people. I say, um, I had a family member having a third birthday the other day and I thought she won't remember the time before you used to talk to people and see them on, on an iPad or, or a laptop or, or whether it's a phone as well. So, so this technology is absolutely a great way to actually connect, to reconnect, to engage and to build or to maintain relationships. So I just want to share with you an example about Earthwatch. Uh, again, many of you uh, may be familiar with Earthwatch, uh, but they're an environmental charity. And one of the things that they do is they do expeditions. And Earthwatch recognised that they got people who'd been on an expedition 10 years ago, and they'd not really connected with them that much since. So they actually got in touch with them during lockdown and recognising that, you know, um, as, as I've shared with you before, um, but if you've not heard me saying it, but there's lots of people sat at home uh, and you've got time that you didn't have before because you're not even doing the daily commute into the office. You're not having the same social life of going in and out uh, of different places in an evening or a weekend or traveling for a weekend away or even uh, that lovely holiday that you might have been planning as well. But uh, they decided they would uh, use the opportunity to, to reconnect with uh, 650 of their uh, people who'd been on um, uh, one of their expeditions and not really had uh, very much contact since. Out of that 650, they got 100 actually uh, got back in touch and then they've subsequently had Zoom calls as a way just to update, to inform what, what's gone on in the organisation uh, my friend uh, went on one of these expeditions uh, quite a number of years ago. She went counting, uh, um, it was at the time when, when the, through the Gulf of Mexico, I can't remember what the species of whale was, but I know she went on a, a whale counting expedition. Uh, and so again, they were updating people. What had happened to, you know, the species of whale that were being counted? What were the numbers like? What was Earthwatch doing in terms of their policies, but also their direct work to actually help? in the environmental crisis that is uh, going on around us as well. But you say, so out of that, you say they got this contact uh, and then out of that, they've actually asked them to share their stories and they've made a book up of those, but they've definitely reconnected, they've re-engaged with these people and many of those will actually become new supporters. Uh, now, another example, uh, the lovely Susie Thompson, who's director of the Royal Northern College of Music. She actually started uh, um, a blog which originally was, was weekly and then they took it down to fortnightly. But again, you know, making it regular is something that is definitely important because consistency. So people know this is happening and it's happening. You know, I've, I've enjoyed today's and it's we'll find out what's happening in, in another couple of weeks as well. And this was all about keep the music playing. So they were sharing stories about what they were doing to enable uh, musicians to actually keep playing music. And then on the back of that, uh, having used it to inform, to update, to share stories, that stories are such a great way to inspire people, uh, they then used it to actually launch an online appeal. 
and you can see at that stage how things were actually doing uh, and it was the most successful appeal they've ever had so as i say great way to engage to connect and then at possibly at a later stage to start asking or inviting people to have that opportunity to make a difference and help that change come about. Another one that you say is, is down in the Southwest, the children's hospice down there, they used to have business breakfasts, but again, you know, physically you can't do that. So they took those online using, you know, Zoom. So again, every month they've carried on they've carried on having a business breakfast. So those businesses get the benefits of connecting, but also they're getting updates. What is going on in the way that children with a, a, a terminal illness are being cared for down in the Southwest? And I heard a lovely story about someone who was uh, one of the business people on that uh, call uh, back in December. They actually had uh, somebody sharing their story uh, about a family uh, of how they had been supported through the COVID pandemic. And uh, afterwards, one of the guys, he said, you were charity of the year. We're not going to stop you being charity of the year. So even though there was no ask, it was about connecting, enabling people to keep in touch. It was about sharing stories, sharing success, but sharing how work is still able to continue in these difficult times, but to support people who are in an incredibly difficult uh, situation to show that they have still got care and support going on and that was so inspirational you say it without even an ask it actually resulted in that company not just saying your charity of the year this year we are going to continue there's other charities you say um everyone seems to have a podcast no i don't actually <laughs> so if, you, if you're looking for one I, I i don't yet have a podcast i say yeah but i don't know whether i ever will but uh, but again it's a great way to share information about what you're doing giving hints and tips uh you know um marie curie the example here you say the marie curie couch but again on a regular basis they actually uh use uh the podcast to help connect people to help inform but also it's a great uh, way uh, to, to have uh, engagement with people, which then in turn gives you a great base of supporters through which you can actually help change the world and make a real difference to the people your organisation is there to support. So again, I just wanted to give you a few examples there of how other charities are using. They're not necessarily using it to fundraise, they're using it to connect. So this is it using digital in the world of fundraising is helping us to connect and that is such an important part again we talk about supporter experience we talk about donor journey but using uh, this technology is a great way to ensure that we are not just uh, treating our donors as an atm that we are connecting we're keeping them informed we're keeping them involved we're updated we're sharing stories of success we're sharing stories of things that sometimes aren't working but hopefully we're inspiring and letting them know there is still need for their help and support. So moving on to think about direct fundraising, I think this is a great diagram that really just sort of uh, starts you to think because they're all on, uh, online fundraising methods uh, that is a way that we're actually connecting with people as a way to promote our cause, but also as part of a donation uh, process as a way to actually connect with people and give them an opportunity. So what we're going to do is very quickly go through each of those just to give you a little bit more as a basis. But again, just using some stats to, to back up what we're talking about here. So, uh, you know, looking back at what we're saying is, um, you know, um, online giving, um, but also uh, merchandise, sales, crowdfunding, text to give, you'll see some of these here. So online giving directly through social media, my goodness, 94% of charities are likely to do this. Um, but also just looking at some of those other things, uh, virtual challenges using fitness app, 82%. Give as you shop. Uh, and again, there are sort of other products available, but you know, oh yeah, it's not huge amounts of money, but what you're doing is enabling people to connect with you. Uh, they're enabling, uh, the, you know, recognizing the fact that so many people are doing shopping online. 
uh, he said, it doesn't seem a day when I, I see uh, about 10 uh, DPD vans uh, go past. They've still got lots of branding on their vans, but I know there's lots of other colour vans that are sort of delivering uh, either Amazon parcels or uh, other couriers uh, are around out there. Uh, but she says such online shopping. So whilst it's not huge, huge, huge amounts of money, getting somebody to sign up, it's just connecting them with your cause. And at least when they actually doing their shopping, Every time then, they're just thinking, oh yeah, and a little bit goes to the charity I've decided to support. So there's team virtual events going on. Um, there's online uh, video game streaming and going on. There's online streaming of quizzes, performances, uh, and there's definitely online streaming of exercise classes, uh, as well as crowdfunding going on. So, so let's start with the problem, you say, and really just to reiterate, you know, there is this uncertainty and lack of confidence in people getting uh, together physically and, and when that is actually even going to st start happening. Now, in the autumn, I was part of a, a, a webinar uh, that uh, fundraising gave some uh, examples and, and they were sort of saying that uh, branded uh, mass uh, um, events uh, we're likely to start in, uh, say, smaller social distance events, February to March, um, but they were still pretty high risk. Uh, I should imagine anyone who got anything planned for this month or next, uh, that's been uh, cancelled or moved or, or abandoned totally. Uh, April to June, they were saying that was going to be medium risk and opening up from July to September uh, with uh, definitely a lower risk. Now, when I put this together last week, this is what I was predicting, uh, saying April to June is now that high risk. So having uh, nudged that back from what we were talking about February to March earlier, with the summer being medium risk uh, and then opening up from early autumn, uh, with mass normal type of, of participation events uh, probably won't be happening until uh, quarter one of 2022. But then last week, various things happened. We've definitely heard, you know, in the last uh, week or so that Glastonbury uh, has now 2021, there will be no Glastonbury. Those lovely fields will get time to rejuvenate even further so that the lush grass will be there for 2022. But also, you say, even as of uh, the 27th, this is literally from, from their website, but the RHS has actually now postponed uh, the um, Chelsea Flower Show, which is one of those great autumn, uh, sorry, spring events, uh, you know, it's, that takes place in, in late May, early June, has now been moved back now to the autumn. So again, taking the lead from what other organisations are doing, uh, you know, this is where you say it's worth monitoring to see what's happening and who is taking, uh, you know, decisions about what it is that they're going to be doing. So interesting. So going back to thinking, though, about what's changed in terms of our supporters. Um, well, not that much in terms of the, the behaviours of humans, whether that's individuals on their own or in groups, whether that's a family group, whether it's a group of friends or within even you know, a work environment. Uh, but you say these things still underpin the sector. So people still want to help others. People want to give and make a difference. They want to have some impact. And I think there's even more, we've got, we feel so out of control. So if we can actually use our fundraising support as a way to retain or, or regain some control, that's going to be a really big in terms of what we share in terms of messaging. But there's this sense of purpose and community and this localism, as I mentioned before, you know, people are getting to know their community more. They're actually discovering who their neighbors are, who are the people who live down the road or the next couple of roads, because they see them on a regular walk or they're bumping into them when they are popping into that local shop because they've run out of milk. People want to be part of something with others. This is, uh, you know, many of you will be familiar with that term, but, you know, want to belong to a tribe uh, which underpins lots of psychology uh, with individuals. They want to get involved with current trends, things that are popular. They don't want to be seen to be missing out on something. So I uh, say, so again, you know, pivoting things and to turning things into virtual, uh, you know, again, when you're having conversations, oh yes, I was doing that the other day. I mentioned before, yes, I was playing Monopoly. I'm going to, oh, I'm so excited excited on Saturday night, a really close friend of mine, his daughter got in touch and said, we're doing a surprise birthday party for dad on Saturday. Are you in? Yes. Seven o'clock with a glass of wine. Yes, we're in. But you know, this is it. 
people want to belong to something and people want to connect uh, and even if it's social but also we can turn those social things into fundraising because I know that's also we're doing a quiz and it is going to be for a charity uh, so people like to follow although there are still leaders out there who want to set the trend so again you know people are getting more active but in a way that's active for them so that might be actually just going up and down the stairs it might be doing that uh, extra bit on a dog walk it might be their gardening it may be their cooking so don't just think everyone wants to do you know a, a 26 uh, mile marathon or whatever or you say i know eddie is uh, about to finish the the huge thing that he's been doing but not everyone is about to do that uh, so just think about what's active in the way but again people are wanting to get moving but in different sorts of ways People uh, need and want meaningful experiences to enhance life as it is, because life is quite boring. Uh, I don't know. I'd resisted, uh, uh, but I finally signed up to Netflix in January. But I thought, oh, gosh, when we went into this latest lockdown, I thought, oh, there's so much crap on TV, uh, a bit of rubbish. So I thought, let me have the choice. Uh, and I know I really enjoyed the dig. On, on Saturday night. We turned it into a cinema night here. We had hot dogs, we had popcorn, and we had our own cinema night watching the dig. Um, and this is it, the, the thing we know that people care. They want to make a tangible difference to others more than ever because we are being touched by the stories we hear, the problems that we know that people and organizations are facing. Groups of people, groups of individuals. You know, again, there's lots of, of you say, musical venues shut down, there's theaters not happening. So again, whether it's the organization of the people benefiting from what they're doing, but people do want to connect and make a difference more than ever. So again, I just want to share sort of a, a bit of a graph, but uh, again, it was already happening. But uh, I, I know I sort of had to get my purse out for something the other day and I still sort of, now, I don't think I'm really wealthy, but there was a wad of cash at the back uh, while I sort of went to get one of my credit cards out. But I then thought, yeah, I got that money at the start of the lockdown. You know, the first one back, uh, you know, uh, sort of, you know, in 2020. And I've not spent it. Now, it doesn't mean I've not been spending. I've told you I've been doing lots of online shopping. But, you know, cash versus, uh, you know, uh, card payments. We'd already seen, and you can see there, that card payments was increasing and cash payments was going down. But I think this is a really interesting one. The BBC uh, sourced it from UK Finance. And just look at where that's being predicted to go, you know. Uh, so, again, uh, the whole of, of what we're going through is actually speeded up this huge process. Uh, you know, even my local fish and chip shop, uh, you know, will no longer accept cash and you've got to pay by a card. So definitely, you know, we've got uh, card machines out there. Uh, digital is definitely replacing physical. Even Movember there, they've got embedded in there. I'm going to mention QR codes, but definitely say even using badges that then people can uh, put their phone against it and actually give. So online giving is say definitely is, is there. Um, you know, have you got that donation button on your website? If not, why not? Uh, you know, again, even if you say we've not got a budget to actually start redeveloping, redesigning our website, this all costs money. We can't do that. But, you know, it's very easy just to even link it to a Just Giving page. So you've got your own Just Giving page that, again, enables people. They've read your stories. They've heard what you're doing. We always need to ask people. I'm a great believer that donors aren't telepathic. So we need to ask in order that people have the opportunity if they want, without pressure. But again, if people, if, if organisations don't ask, the general public out there thinks you've got enough money. So what you should be doing is just making sure you've got sort of donation buttons all over the place. So again, people know if you're asking, it means that you need the money. And then link that to what it is that you're trying to do, trying to change what you want to achieve to make life better and different for others. So text uh, to give. Again, there was talk about this was starting to drop. But uh, again, if you've been on some of my other webinars, I gave you some incredible figures uh, previously about text to give. But again, it's such an easy way that uh, people can can give uh, through just texting uh, a code and an amount. Comic Relief uh, was uh, is being launched today. Um, now I know some of you will have a big sigh when you hear that and think, oh, they have all those resources. Is that going to take money away from us? But what it's doing, it's giving people an outlet, an opportunity. Uh, and I'm a great believer. 
told you and the eternal optimist but as people get giving they also think about other charities other organizations they want to support other causes that mean something special so i always think if people are giving to one cause they might be thinking what else should i also be getting into so it might be peer pressure they may be sort of taken along with the momentum but again uh, as comic relief moves forward you definitely will see lots of opportunities uh, to text to give through that. It is also known as mobile giving. Um, again, it was always not been on Achieve in London for an awful long time. Uh, but again, lots of, of adverts there because people were sat there and it was just a quick way, uh, share a, a quick reason why someone should uh, give. There's a problem, there's an issue, you can help change it, text to give. And people regularly would do that when sat on the tube while they got that sort of few minutes uh, and nothing else to do. So crowdfunding is one type of, of online fundraiser that relies on a, a variety of donors to make small and medium sized gifts. So again, there's all sorts of different uh, crowdfunding campaigns that have been running out there. I know sometimes even musicians have been doing it just to say, help me fund uh, you know, my next recording of, of a new album. But you say within the charity world, uh, it is a, a popular way. So again, you might have something small, discreet, tangible. I would always, uh, unless you're a huge charity, I don't uh, you know, aim for a huge amount because that is one thing with, with crowdfunding, you need to reach the target. Sometimes you say it's a great way to actually involve perhaps a major donor or possibly even a corporate supporter who perhaps will match fund. And so you get it off the ground that way and then it's a great way to, to unlock some other funding as well. But uh, definitely, you say, it definitely gets spread uh, and uh, you, this is it, you want the word to, to get around uh, people within uh, networks through social media using you know things like Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and so again using emails as well to get the message out. Now peer-to-peer -peer, uh, fundraising campaigns or social fundraisers is again it's sometimes known as this is where people themselves uh, are actually doing their own fundraising. So again we've seen lots and lots of examples where that's been happening uh, you know, uh, going back to last uh, April when uh, the London Marathon didn't happen, but it became the 2.6 challenge. And really, this was using that basic principle of peer to peer fundraising, where an individual or a group of individuals would agree to do something or decide they wanted to do something, whether it was inspired by an organization saying you could do this or whether just the momentum. And again, we're going to see that happen lots, you know, out there, Comet Relief is just being launched and saying, you know, why don't you fundraise for us? These are the things that we want to achieve. Uh, these are the differences we want to make to uh, people's lives by uh, the, the help that you can give through your gifts and your own fundraising. So while some people will directly donate to Comet Relief, other people will then choose to do their own thing. So, uh, you know, you might say, why don't you do a cake bake? And, and you have a big cake bake, but not everyone is interested in cakes. Perhaps they can't eat cakes or just they're on a diet and say, no, I can't do that. Uh, so, yes, sometimes it's good to give people an idea. And you might sort of do a big promotion uh, by saying, why don't you do your own cake bake? But again, sometimes it's just about letting people do what's important to them. So they may be turning, you know, their regular exercise into something else. And again, uh, on the, the news uh, this, this week, there's a guy who's just starting a four mile walk every day. Now you might think, cracky four miles, I do that most days. Uh, but this is a guy who's parallels from the waist down and he's got an incredible piece of kit that enables him. He only goes slow, but he's actually physically walking with the aid of this kit that helps him to, to uh, stimulate his muscles. Uh, and he's gonna do this throughout February, four miles a day. Uh, and again, we've heard lots of examples and obviously we must be thinking about Sir Captain Tom Moore, who's poorly in hospital at the moment in Bedford. Because again, he's inspired so many people thinking, well, if this 99, almost 100 year old guy could do what he did, you know, why can't I do something? So again, that's using that basis. So people are choosing sometimes the thing that you're suggesting or they're actually just saying, I'm doing this and I'm doing it for a charity and then setting up their own online giving page that they're then sharing that uh, through social media and connecting with friends and family then other people start to find out about it. And sometimes it does hit local or national media and then encourages more and more people to actually get involved. 
So merchandising and other sales. Uh, now then, there's two two aspects to this. So it may be that you know you've got merchandise or, or other sales. And I know again that this morning, uh, Comic Relief was saying I heard Sir Lenny Henry on uh, the TV uh, this morning uh, launching Comic Relief. But he was actually saying that the, the red noses this year, because again, uh, we're obviously a lot more aware about the destruction that plastic causes to the planet. So apparently it's a plant-based decomposable red nose, but it can't be eaten, I, I need to say. Uh, but so, so again, that's a time-limited merchandise in order to get your red nose, you know, just go and visit. I'm not promoting it for them, but I'm just saying that's what you say some organisations do. You might be encouraging people to, to do a run for you at the moment or just recognising people are doing more exercise. Why don't they get your T-shirt, your running vest, your cycle shorts? Uh, so, again, you might have this time limited merchandise and it's a way to generate some money using an online shop. But also it is that other way to raise profile and awareness. Because you know what? If someone is running past, uh, you know, I told you, I, I see the main footpath in front of my house. Um, not seeing anyone in a branded running vest. Oh, gosh, literally someone's just gone running past at the moment and I can't believe it. They're wearing the charity my husband works for. They're wearing his charity vest. Wow, <laughs> I couldn't have set that up. I really wanted to turn the screen around so you can see that. <laughs> that is quite spooky. Uh, so yeah, so so this is it. So people going out, uh, she's got that over a long sleeve t-shirt. Uh, and so she's obviously, perhaps she's, she's doing something possibly even for that charity. That would be great if she is. But again, you know, uh, you might be sending it as, as an incentive when people sign up or when they raise a certain amount. Um, just think that might be if you raise up to, a, you know, when you hit £100, we'll send you our running vest or, you know, sign up to this, pay your registration fee. And as part of that, you get it. But also it may be something that you actually want to sell. Uh, so it might be, you say, uh, could be that T-shirt that people, it could be a mug uh, or, or whatever. But there's things that may be relevant. Helps reinforce your message. But again, it's something that keeps people connected for longer with your cause. But also when they have bought that thing, uh, they've actually made a contribution. But also just think about, you know, lots of charity shops. You know, the high streets are shut at the moment. Only sort of, you know, essential shops are actually open at the moment. Uh, so that is anything relating to food, uh, depending where you are in the country. And how, who knows how long this will go on for. So many organisations have pivoted, but some started to recognise we don't have charity shops, but people want to donate things to us. I know an animal welfare charity who is saying looks after equines and they, they wanted, you know, people wanted to give them, you know, horse blankets. They wanted to give them tack and they said, you know, we've got enough uh, for the horses that we've got in our care. We actually have enough of this stuff. But then they set up an eBay shop and it was a great way to generate income because, you know, they would uh, sort of accept good quality secondhand goods. But also it's a way to connect. So people were visiting their website, they were connecting. And then as a result of that, we're finding out more about the charity. So it's part of that sort of ongoing process. We don't just ask someone the first time we have a connection. Sometimes we build up a relationship. They know us through other things and then start to think, hey, this is a charity that I'm involved with directly or indirectly. Perhaps I should be supporting in a different way. And virtual events. Uh, we've already touched a, a little on virtual events, uh, but you know, virtual events can be fundraising events uh, as a great way to actually keep people connected. But you say, uh, might have a wine tasting, you might have a quiz night, the famous uh, lockdown quiz. Uh, again, uh, I think we used an example before from Marie Curie. They managed to get all sorts of wonderful people to, to host their quizzes. And I know Jodie Whittaker did a, um, a Doctor Who theme quiz. Uh, so that was a great way. But again, it's a great way even just to, as, as companies uh, are looking for ways to connect and keep their workforce connected. Uh, many people say, if working from home is great, but I'm not connecting with my colleagues. You might be doing pizza Friday. Uh, I don't know, lots of charities are doing this because again, teams are dispersed. But again, sometimes, even if it's not a fundraiser, but it's something that you might want to offer to one of your corporate supporters or put together a toolkit that can be used with your corporate supporters not necessarily to raise money, but to give something back. 
again, uh, those of you who've been on previous sessions will know that one of my mantras is it's going to be a win-win. We've got to give something back as well as take. So that can be quite a practical way to give something back. But a great way to connect people. Uh, and I know uh, within the Jolly family, um, we all started to uh, not declare our true scores because we were doing the Wednesday lockdown quiz in the first lockdown. And the joy and the, the prize of winning was that you got the privilege of actually designing the next quiz. So this is it, when you were giving your scores at the end, you'd always knock a few off with the hope that you wouldn't then be designing the next quiz. Because again, sometimes it's a bit fun, but sometimes it's, oh my goodness. So to actually, you know, get that in from, from a charity, it's just a great way. Uh, and again, you might be able to share some interesting facts and information about your cause. So again, just some stats here, just to help you, as I said, to back up your argument of, of what we should be doing uh, as you move forward. But again, this is a graph of adults who are who donate to charity are more likely to do so if they can directly do it via a social media platform. So again, looking at those different age groups. So the very purple, purple bit on the left-hand side is the much more likely, and then the, the, the lilac are fairly more likely. So, uh, you know, so there are people who are more likely and much more likely. Obviously, much less likely, again, there are other people. So again, this isn't instead of, this is as well as. So I know many charities are still doing the paper drop. I got several Christmas appeals uh, through my letterbox. I know on the last call, I shared something that had dropped out of my uh, subscription to the Radio Times that had just sort of come through. So it's not an either or, uh, you know, it's, it's to supplement and, and reach new audiences and reach audiences who wouldn't respond in perhaps a more traditional way. Again, looking at uh, some facts around if uh, adults who are more likely to donate, when they see their friends doing. So this is peer pressure, this is following the crowd. Um, so this is it. So knowing what's going on, we need to pivot some of our activities. So no longer are we having those collection boxes. We're having uh, things that are contactless. And don't you love that with Blue Cross? Uh, so many people who are out with dogs, uh, uh, assistance dogs, very often get approached. So Blue Cross have maximised on that. And so for owners who want the opportunity at certain times to put that on their dog, uh, they're encouraged to do so. So again, even, uh, you know, that lovely one uh, with having the, the uh, touch to, to donate, tap to donate uh, in, in the window. Again, there's one for prostate cancer uh, and then uh, at an entrance to a museum. So some were doing this before lockdown, before the pandemic, but also others have been doing it as a way to enable people to still keep giving. We mentioned before, you know, give us as you live. Uh, but again, you know, there's there's easy fundraising, and obviously, don't forget Amazon Smile. Just very very small amounts, but small amounts uh, start to build up. Remember what your granny probably said to you: look after the pennies, and the pounds will look after themselves. We've already talked about, you say, doing uh, virtual uh, physical activities and doing a run or something else, but you say definitely take that online. So many uh, organisations and many individuals took up that 2.6 challenge and 75% of fundraisers chose to set up a page for that challenge on Just Giving. So again, that just shows the power and the ability and the reach because it's virtual. They did, uh, individuals did the activity, but they did their fundraising through what we would talk as a digital method or in a virtual arena. You know, we've already mentioned uh, Captain Sir Tom uh, and again, some incredible statistics there. And that was just one page on Just Giving. Uh, we mentioned the RHS before in, in uh, uh, when we were talking about uh, it's the Chelsea Flower Show, but here um, the National Garden Scheme, which often people know as the Yellow Book, they pivoted, but they were about hosting your own uh, garden party, which uh, was about doing that in September. But again, you know, many people who, uh, many charities who've done um, garden open days uh, and things in the past have actually then encouraged people. And you can see, if you can see my cursor there on their website, they've got virtual garden tours. And I know quite a lot of charities who, so many more people are proud of what their garden looks like at the moment. In my village, I regularly get asked, will you open your garden? And I think, oh gosh, I'll have to do so much weeding before. And I always 
managed to find a suitable reason that why I'm not around that weekend and not able to do it. But, you know, loads of people have been spending time in the garden uh, and they would have been very willing. But again, it couldn't happen. So uh, it could either be really scaled back and just saying, you know, uh, if we can uh, or if we could last year, you know, just have six people in the garden. But again, just think about, you know, we could do that as a virtual and with a camera on your phone, everyone can become a filmmaker. So 22% of all UK uh, fundraising uh, is, is event fundraising. So we definitely need to think about how uh, to actually turn that online. We've seen lots of examples of things that have been done. Uh, I know I might have shared with this with you on one of the other sessions, but if you weren't on that, you know, again, such a big, uh, and everyone's always saying, we want the next Macmillan coffee morning. But again, Macmillan, it was a huge, huge uh, income generator for them. And they had to think quickly what they could do to make it work. So whilst they were encouraging people to do uh, things within whatever the restrictions allowed at the time, which was last September, they also pivoted it and said, you know, do the famous thing. Here we are. Get your cup, take a selfie and upload it onto the, uh, our, our wall and pay a donation to, you know, make a donation in order to do that. So it was a great way to connect and people could then have a look, see their family and friends, they could do a search on it as well. So this is it. So it was their wall of support. And you say in the end, when, when they thought uh, London Marathon, having moved it from uh, April into October, it only ended up being the elite race. And I did sort of really sympathize with the organizers because it was the 40th race and they wanted to make it really special. But again, it did became, become special in its own way. So some other examples of other virtual events, you know, Miles for Refugees that uh, the British Red Cross turned into a virtual event. So that was one that they pivoted. It was just a walk previously, but then they, they uh, talked about it in a virtual. So seven, thousand participants and it raised two million pounds and again some other examples of different uh, virtual events that other charities have been running. So what we need to, uh, some important things that we need to take into account, there are benefits to uh, going uh, digital and running things in a virtual world but there are also some challenges as well so again I'm a great believer, I think about the positives but understand what might be some of the issues around so either you can overcome them or you know at least start to reflect it within your targeting and your budgeting as well and use that as well to understand what extra support or how best to support your participants you know um, so often uh, people like to, to do things and and they connect they're already using uh, tools lots of runners actually do Strava they like to understand where they've been what their uh, you know uh, rates of, of running were the speed that they were going at uh, what was the miles they did today and all these things so again you know just giving very quickly um, you know started to link this with just giving pages so that people could actually live stream their activities and that seeing is believing uh, was great, but also joining people and their run. And even though you perhaps weren't going to sort of, you know, join them physically, you could actually join them and see where they were running. And they might have been running through some interesting countryside or at least just pounding the streets where they lived. So, again, just think about what are some of the key benefits around those sorts of activities as well. Uh, you know, this live streaming is very, very uh, popular in all sorts of different. So it's not just running. Uh, definitely uh, people can share a, a live stream video. So it might be, you know, you are baking a cake, but it can be shared live stream. Uh, and lots of people, you know, do like to uh, join in, see. And it does actually inspire other people to say, crikey, you know, uh, if they can do that. And why do we think, you know, when Bake Off happens, uh, the Channel 4 series and then the Celebrity Bake Off, there is definitely an uptake in uh, flower sales uh, and all the other ingredients that go into some of those uh, products and cakes. So again, it's just a way that people then also themselves get inspired. So we can have campaigning uh, pages uh, uh, on things uh, such as Just Giving as well. Uh, and also Just Giving enables you to set up QR codes, which again, something that we thought had disappeared, but they're making uh, a big comeback. And you can use them on, on your home uh, website, home page, you can use them for campaign pages uh, on your fundraising pages. Uh, so they enable you to convert uh, more donations uh, online. 
and it can be used for gift aid and they can be printed out and displayed in lots of locations such as you know charity shop windows or even car parks uh, and again it may be um your um you've got a, a car park near to something i've been doing quite a bit of work within the heritage uh, uh arena the sector and again, lots of people, they have a car park, but they've still got dog walkers. And so they're using this as a way to say, well, normally the car park's free, but enable us to reopen and donate to park your car while you go for your dog walk. So just a, a couple more slides before we open up. But you say definitely, uh, you know, birthday fundraisers. Uh, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely getting a link uh, sent to me uh, about uh, this birthday fundraiser that we're doing at the weekend my friend Brett but you know Facebook's doing it you can set up something on just giving but again uh, definitely uh, I really hate paying postage for things I know I can have a gift de delivered online but also people say well what on earth do I want at the moment unless it's another bottle of wine perhaps uh, but you say uh, it may be a way to donate to a charity a charity uh, that we know is close to an individual or they've said uh, I'm not having presents this year I'd like uh, donations to go to uh, my favourite cause. So just to wrap up then, so uh, factors for success uh, for your fundraising in the virtual world, just think about your audience. Who are the people that you're targeting? What experience do they want? What is it that they really enjoy? What's important to them? And just remember, they want to belong to something that's not just them. They want to belong to something bigger. So they're part of a tribe. What is the product that you're offering? So this is the thing they're using to connect. How do they connect with you? How do they make an impact? How do they have fun with it? And as a result of that, through the money that they're generating and the support that they're giving, they can then become a better human being. And your charity mission is say, we want to use these tools that we've got, not just to uh, encourage people to fundraise in a way that's easy to do it and a way that they can do it now and it's safe, but also, we want to connect with these people so that it's not just this one off, that we have the opportunity to build a long and lasting, meaningful relationship. We can inspire them to raise money for us initially or support us by volunteering or giving of gifts in kind or whatever. But also we can use this as an opportunity to thank them. Thank them for their generosity. Thank them for their support. And then we can update them. Because we thank straight away, so they know we appreciate what we've done, but we do need to update them so that they know what has been achieved within our organisation. Tell them about the changes that have been brought about, the changes in way, the way that we're operating, but also the changes we've been made, uh, that have been made to the people that we're there to support so that they are benefited and they know that their money or their support has made a real difference to real people remember that underpins all of our fundraising. Whatever method you're using to do it, we still have those same principles. We're just using different tools and media in which we can actually connect. So that brings us very nicely to our Q&A session. And I'm sure that uh, Kathy and Ian have been very busy uh, looking at what's been coming in. So uh, Kathy, do you want to join us on screen? Yeah, can you start my video? Please. Right, you should be able to switch it on. Angus is up. Okay. Great. Great session as always. Thank you, Jill. And you know I have to do my little sort of geographic rundown, which goes from Dublin to Lincoln to Exmouth to Cumbria, to Brighton, to Newcastle on time, right back down to um, Devon again, and all the way through Derbyshire, Cambridge, and right up to the Highlands. So great, great geographical reach as well to that. That's, that's great for everybody. Lots well, and knowing, knowing some of the places, Cathy, you've just said we've got people online with us from, you say, uh, probably, you say, the reason some of them haven't joined us is they're probably outside making a snowman or having a sm snowball fight. I know uh, there's big swathes of the UK covered in snow this morning. 
Yeah, there was a swathe of the northwest just got drizzle, so I hope somebody is enjoying the snow and I hope nobody's getting <laughs> too badly, badly damaged by it. A um, couple of practical questions. I, I'm always sorry if I miss a bit of this because if I'm scribbling down the question, you may have in the next thing you said an answered this question for the participants. Um, some examples of text to give providers. Right. I, I, what I don't want to do is just give one that I know. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just Google or, or whatever other search engine, but also talk to other charities that you know uh, and just actually say, who are you having a good relationship with? Uh, is that I, I don't want to. Great. Someone's put something. And, and in fact, it's is that provider I use as an example in, in one of our previous uh, sort of uh, workshops, uh, webinars. So, um mm. But he's say, uh, and that's great. Someone else has come on saying, I would really recommend Dota and another's agreed as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to feel like I'm really endorsing a particular product or, or a provider because um, that, that you say, you, I might have had a particularly good experience or a particularly bad experience that isn't necessarily reflected. So uh, just do a quick bit of research. Again, the network's going mad. This is great. Uh, share things with each other uh, and it gives you a starting point. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there is lots of chat going on about a few different things. If you look back through the transcript of the of the chat, and um, you might be able to find things on that. And you might say the same about this, actually, Jill. And um, ideas, you know, where can we sell our merchandise to raise funds that isn't eBay? Well, again, um, people, have, you know, it, 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 I, I'm told I, I'm not that techy. Uh, I can't do it myself, but I'm told it's not that difficult to set something up uh, on, on your own website and actually have a shop, but you need that payment process. Uh, some of your own database systems will allow you to do that. Some of your own website providers will allow you to do that as well. But, but you know, I, I don't know what the problem is with eBay, but it's, again, it's, it's like with these things that there's often several different uh you know mechanisms but one starts to sort of stand out um lots of, of local areas have got their own sort of sites um uh again my nephew down in cornwall uh, is is in, in viewed that there is this viewed network and he's forever sort of buying and selling stuff on that uh you know so again just look if you're a local charity are there local things that are doing, uh, you know, providing that service? Uh, and again, they're often free uh, and don't take attention. It's just a community facility as well. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Um, we're going to go the same thing. Any any recommendations for contactless donation devices? And somebody was asking about Q, QR codes. I will do a bit of a shameless promotion, and I don't promote very companies, but. Um, I haven't got his details to hand. Get hold of Lee at Angle, A-N-G-A-L. And they've got all sorts of, um, and they're working with hospice fundraisers, institute of fundraisers, everywhere. Um, so, so they do lots of that kind of thing. Um, Jill, a couple of tips and ideas for the, how we can use Twitter and Facebook a bit better to, to raise digitally. What are your top tips then? Right. Well, that's that's really interesting. I know there's quite a few charities. Uh, I think um, there's a brain cancer charity doing some great stuff where they get a Facebook group around an activity. And so they then become the mutual support. Uh, again, I got some slides I was going to include in this. And then I thought, uh, we've only got limited time. We could, we could be here all day. We could be here all week talking about this. So I, I definitely that was that was sort of part of my first edit down. Um, but yeah, so, so it's, it's sort of you know you, you bring people in, you form the they form a Facebook group that you help uh, facilitate. Uh, but this this is the key thing though. You do need to. Uh, I know that one of the criticisms or, or one of the the challenges for for many charities is then you do need to sort of keep an eye on it. So even though you're connecting them, it is associated with your charity. So you do need moderators. But going back to that concept, people want to belong to something. They want to be part of a tribe. So this is their tribe. So they're sharing tips about their fundraising, and and so they're connecting. And it's a great way then to update and inform, to share some stories about the work that you're doing, the past successes you've had, to get some of your uh, you know service users to share their story, to help inspire and motivate. Uh, and so yeah, so it's it's a great way to get people connecting. So it becomes a seal group. 
you know, they, they opt to join it, but that way it becomes self-supporting and those people themselves then start sharing tips. Again, if people are going to do a run, so again, it may be you then in, in, insert someone to, to help give them some, some, you know, training tips and things like that. So they're being supported by you, but there's lots of self-support going on as well. And um, Joe, we know the, the joy of small charities, but small charities, a couple of questions here around small charities and small um, donor bases. So, you know, we, we, we've got a small supporter base and then online fundraising is very limited. But there's another question as well that says similar thing. We've, you know, we've got a, a low customer base, but actually are there any websites or platforms that you can put your stuff out there that has that common interest? You know, people might find a common interest. Well, again, I, I would look to see, again, you know, there's this locality. People want to belong to a community. So again, find out what's happening in your local community. There are lots of, of different communities setting up their own Facebook page, which is a great way to share things and be part of. So you're not necessarily having to do it, you're participating in somebody else's. But again, you know, um, you know, I, I'll share. I, I, I didn't have a Twitter account, uh, you know, until last year <laughs> because it's just something you know i just didn't have the time to, to sort of you know connect and 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 look at stuff uh, and whatever um but you know it, it is if i can do it anyone can do it i really do do see I, i'm really lazy because I, I i my other half is he's an absolute techie genius <laughs> i just don't bother you know i just say oh can you sort this out which is is, is really bad and i've just thought this is really bad I've really got to take control. <laughs> so yeah, this is Jill, Jill, the answer to the delegate is not my husband will do it. <laughs> no, it's no, definitely not. You need some difference. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if I can do this, and, and this is it, so, so get yourself a Twitter account and just yeah. post things. Don't just post random stuff that's of no interest, but, you know, join in other people's conversations, you know, because people put stuff out there. You react to it, you comment about it, but then it's a chance to share your own stuff. You say, I'm absolutely useless. I don't do it very often. But as a small charity, it is a great way to actually, you know, get your message out there and start to have a following and then, you know, follow other people, follow other organisations, and then people will start connecting with you. And it's a great way to get your message out there using, you say, Instagram as well. There's so many other platforms, uh, you know. Again, you know, I, I, I don't want to go totally mad, but, you know, TikTok is, is growing in such popularity. I know there's lots of crazy dances and different things going on. But again, if you've got a group of supporters, who, who that motivates them. They want to post stuff. They want to do something crazy because it's a way they're connected. It may be you've got a band who, who would normally do a concert or a choir would do a concert. So, again, you might be able to link with them and they can do something online and then share your message as well at the same time. So, you know, some of this stuff, it's really easy to do. Oh, good. I say somebody's just put something. Yay. Uh, somebody's doing a TikTok and doing a 24 hour live stream uh, and, and it's already raised 3000. So again, find people who are doing these things, people who are already connecting with you. Uh, and, you know, it's almost don't do it yourself. Get them to do it for you. It's back to that peer to peer and other people doing things on your behalf and sharing your message, but then getting them to connect. You know, I said before, you know, loads of people loads of people are doing podcasts and again loads of people are listening to podcasts so again as a charity you know why don't you start at your own podcast you don't have to commit to do it every week you know perhaps start off by doing it every fortnight or every three weeks or you know the first wednesday in the month or whatever and and, and use it to, to share something that's relevant to the people who you support you care for you provide services for but who, who volunteer with you and again you know by encouraging people to join in with that we're getting that engagement and in the involvement that really does actually help thank you very much Jill. um Jill, you might look just back to the start of the questions there was a question from nadina about earthwatch linking with people and was whether it was it within gdpr guidelines again it was something i was trying to capture and copy and oh yeah obviously to talk about it <clears throat> yeah obviously to go back 10 years you say and, and they've obviously had permissions uh, to, to to be in touch so yes you obviously need to take into account have you uh you know got the the relevant permissions uh but yes obviously uh, i'm not going to quote something that wasn't within <laughs> appropriate okay. regulations but and, and obviously but again you know 
this is a great time to go back through your database. People who are still perhaps just receiving your newsletter. Yes, they've opted, they want to receive your newsletter uh, and you're connecting with them. So again, you might use that to say, we're going to do an online, uh, we're, we're, you know, but you need to register. So, so again, use possibly that digital uh, online newsletter to connect with people, to give them something proactive to do. Uh, you know, we're doing an online behind the scenes tour. We're doing a rehearsal. You know, again, uh, I use sort of, you know, an example with the, the Northern College of Music. Um, so depending what your organisation is, uh, come and spend, you know, an hour on, on our unit while we're doing something or see how, uh, you know, again, so many runners, uh, you know, many cyclists will, will have a, a camera on their head. But, you know, why don't you do that a day in the life of? So, again, people can click in and see what's going on and they get to really experience experience uh, what's happening we just have to remember to turn it off when they perhaps nip into the bathroom there okay yeah um it, it, again you i think you've given a couple examples across across the board but in in a small town and um, what's the best methodology for gaining attention locally to let people around you know about your services so this might be a digital versus question because that's the starting point with digital isn't it digital versus Shall we? No. <laughs> exactly. But again, you know, use your supporters, use your staff, use your, uh, you know, your your volunteers. Again, lots of charities keep saying to me, oh, we're desperate to try and keep our, our, our volunteers engaged. Um, I'm a volunteer with uh, very various charities, but I know uh, one charity sends me a Friday email, uh, you know, just tell me what's going on, but also giving me opportunities to do things as well. So one of that is, you know, I can be starting to think about some fundraising opportunities. But again, what we don't want to do is lose those volunteers so that when we do start to uh, do things in, in a physical world, whether it's fundraising, whether it's providing our services or whatever, but use those as your, your advocates, get them talking. So again, that might be another reason why, why you just have, you know, let's just have a quiz for all our volunteers to come together. So when they're together, you just say, you know, could you just spread the word in the different things that you're doing? And this quiz is available. You can use this to connect your family and friends. They don't have to make a donation to the charity, but, you know, uh, you know, perhaps with the quiz questions or you, you send something. So there is some profile raising about your cause as well. So just think creatively. Think about what you normally do and say, how can I do that now? Can I do it physically or can I do it virtually in, in this sort of day and age? And again, I know so many organisations originally, they were just doing a coffee and chat. Something else that I'm involved with, uh, we're doing a nosh and natter. Again, we just know that people over lunch, that might be the only time. We know people are really busy. But we're just saying because we don't want to do things in an evening because it's sort of semi-professional in, in wearing a work hat on. But we just say we've done coffee and chat, we've done tea and talk, but we're now trying a nosh and natter session just as a way to connect people. Uh, and it's just come along and just meet. Um, it's only half an hour, so there's not a lot of time to do things, but at least you're connecting with other people. But again, your charities can be doing these things as a way to connect people. There's lots of people who are bored with the TV. They can't do anything else. They've done their exercise in the day. They're not going to go on their static bike now. They can't be bothered making any more cakes because the freezer's already full. So what are they going to do? So it may be a great way to say, hey, this, this is happening tonight. I could join in with this. And so, again, you know, even, even on a Thursday night, perhaps Friday night, people are doing a personal thing. You know, join us for a glass of wine or, or bring your uh, glass of squash and just connect. But then you say you might do things just to engage people. But then you might say, right, well, we're going to have a speaker. Well, you might be a health charity. Well, give an update on something. But there are, again, people who are just wanting to escape COVID. So it may be uh, you're, you're an organisation that's got a historical base. So, again, uh, possibly you did lectures before. People did a guided tour. So, again, one of those volunteers who perhaps did those guided tours could perhaps just share some of the facts that they've found out about their organization uh you know or or about the building or whatever it is that you're doing so people can share something about the organization that perhaps gives them a closer link or you could share a story someone who's benefited from the work that you do so again it can be a, a chat with someone who's benefited from our services and they can uh, tell you uh, the difference that your support has made so again it's a great way to connect and that's uh, something that could be done 
during the daytime, depending on your audience or, or in an evening. But as I say, definitely uh, on the whole, avoid Friday nights. Uh, but Thursday nights um, uh, and Wednesday nights tend to be good. And I know someone was talking about awards. And again, something I'm involved with. We're, we're doing an awards ceremony. Uh, um, and it's a great way, again, to pull people together and recognise what people are doing in difficult times. I think we've time for, for perhaps uh, one, one last I, question. I think I've got one more. I, I wanted to highlight a couple and say, Jill always says there's, there's one or two things she'll take via LinkedIn. People are talking about loss of income because of COVID with one funder saying, <laughs> the, the applicant saying, we can't meet face to face because of COVID and the funder saying, well, you're not operating under normal circumstances, so we can't fund you. Yes, that kind of a vicious circle, that kind of thing maybe they can bring to you. Also, people asking questions, which might be a little bit um, offside, things like setting up a CIC so that we attract that corporate sponsorship and so on. Again, it's in yeah, the other, it's in the other videos, call. so I'm going to do this. I'm going to come to you with this one and because it's based on what you were last saying, that, you know, I don't know myself how much of this is about creativity and how much of it is about, hang on, there's a process here, just follow these steps. But somebody has um, an online fundraising page with CAF but have no donations, haven't received any donations. So how do you raise the awareness for that campaign? It becomes a bit vicious circle, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no point just having a page because people won't necessarily just fall onto it, whether it's CAF, whether it's Just Giving, whether it's Virgin Giving. Again, lots of different providers out there. So you need to promote that. You need to send the link to your page. And that's where you can use all sorts of different social media to do that. But again, you know, on your website, have you got something on your home page that directs people there? So again, um, you know, again, I, I visit so many charities websites. I can tell you loads of them bore me to death and I'm not being super critical, but it never changes. And I just think we're in a change in time. Fine, you still want your same basic content, but you know, put little banners up, put little boxes up. So, so you, you're focusing on something. It, it's a bit like, you know, um, the, 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 the email footer, you know, again, might be your, your, your IT team do that. Um, or you use it, you know, you change it every month or even every two weeks. So it's almost like, you know, you're being proactive there. So, so just think of some of the things that you're doing in that arena and just apply it to your websites. Um, and again, what are you doing to drive people to your website? Uh, so, uh, you know, are, are you doing things that, that are using social media uh, or, or you're, you're, you're sending an email out to your uh, supporters? You're sending something to your volunteers. Just think about who you're connecting with and how you're doing things, but also use other things like I said about things that are going on locally. See if there's something that's, you know, the, the, the local, um, you know, BBC regional uh, news programs are always looking for content. So again, I, I know people are saying, oh, it means work. But look, we, we didn't get anywhere in this world without a bit of hard work. And, and there's things that you aren't doing. So just think I freed up some time. And if I can reach a bigger audience, crikey, you know, through five phone calls or some emails or whatever. But then sort of people are looking for content. Other people are looking for content. So see how you can connect with those and just, um, you know, use again uh, all the outlets, uh, you know, your social media, different links. And, and tell your supporters thing and ask them to share that with their networks as well. So it's this, you know, uh, trickle effect. You're, you're telling five people, those five, if they tell another five and those five tell another five, we're in this huge pyramid. And that's what you're trying to do. Uh, and that's, again, what some of the things when you can repost or follow something. So, again, you know, comment on something and put your own links in there and encourage people to go and visit your own homepage, perhaps, so that people then are actually sort of hitting that homepage and then seeing something. But share some stories. Stories is, is part of our DNA, uh, as we talked about a little bit last time uh, on, on your, your messaging. Stories connect, but you know, there's so often we just think about stories about our, our service users or our beneficiaries. We've got so many stories. You know, why is a volunteer involved? Why is a donor involved? Uh, why is a trustee involved? Uh, you know, uh, but also your founding story. There can be some incredible stories uh, that build up around all these wonderful organizations that I know are on this call today. So just don't think tunnel vision, just think, you know, 360 degrees, think roundabout. What are some of the stories that we can use to share to engage people? 
Uh, and, and again, do think about that podcast element as well uh, so that people are connecting. And again, things don't sort of happen overnight and don't say after two weeks, well, not a lot's happening. You just have to keep persevering uh, and things will then start to improve as well. So I think you say in terms of timing, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for, for, for gathering up some questions. And for those of you out there who say, I thought I had a really good question. She's not answered it. As I said, uh, I'll put the, the offer out there. You know, we're talking about digital today. That's what today's subject was about. So if you've got a question, I will deal with the first uh, three of those uh, that come to me via LinkedIn. You can easily find me on LinkedIn uh, and I'll come back to you on those. So let's just go back to um, is that our screen share because I just want to, um, oh, gone too fast. Uh, so again, where, where do you go? More information, next steps. You said the Ecclesiastical website, there's a huge amount of information on their charity fundraising hub. So please do go and have a look at that. And then again, uh, DSC, the Director of Social Change. Again, there's loads and loads of links there, but just again, going to the homepage, you can find loads of then different links to the different parts of there. But you say DSC is there to support you out there, helping you to help others. Um, as we've already mentioned, this is the fifth of our series of five webinars. Um, so you say, definitely need to get my tissue out. It's been great connecting with you over, I say, the last couple of months doing this. Uh, but that's the list of what we've had. Uh, way back, you say, before Christmas, we talked about the fundraising environment and also your fundraising plan. There's no point doing things without having a plan. We then talked about the fundraising sources uh, and the methods to tap into those. We then, just a couple of weeks ago, talked about your fundraising message in current times. Today, we talked about going digital. And again, that's the website in which uh, we can link. But I just want to hand over now just uh, for some final words from Angus. So over to you, Angus. Hello, thanks, Jill. Sorry, uh, I'm obviously not quite as digital as I thought, pressing the wrong button and turning my camera on early, so I do apologise. Well, at but, least uh, I don't need to do that famous one, Angus. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like the catchphrase of 2020, isn't it? If you had to sum up 2020 in a catchphrase, probably you're on mute. Uh, but there you go. That is digital. Um, that is the opportunity. One day we'll all learn. Um, I just want to say a, a couple of words on sort of behalf of Ecclesiastical. Um, first and foremost, um, we're, from the bottom of my heart, I really do hope this series of events and the web page will assist uh, and help the organisation. Now, it's not for me to say granted, but from first impressions on numbers of participants, the amazing level of chat and questions that are going on, great interaction, um, it, it kind of feels like it has helped. So, But we've got fingers crossed we've help, helped your organisations uh, recruit some, possibly some of their lost funds. I do want to say a big thank you to DSC and particularly Jill and you know everyone behind the scenes. Um, I, I think we definitely got the right partner. Uh, again, probably ev evidenced by the level of participation that we've seen. So I want to say a big thank you to them. Um, as Jill said, it was quite sad when you sort of logged on. I think, oh, this is the last one. But I think we've got to reposition that. Just like your fundraising, you've got to reposition it. Um, it, it's the end of the beginning, not the beginning of the end, okay? So hopefully we've been able to give you some tools, uh, fire up your enthusiasm, have, you know, as Jill says, this 360 lateral thinking environment that will now allow you to have the courage, you know, courage sometimes. Sometimes it is about courage, sometimes it's about getting enthusiasm, getting the right people, but the enthusiasm and courage to go out there and try something new, and again, all about recouping the lost funds so that you can keep going with your activities help your beneficiaries and make that impact okay so we so that that was a couple of things i think the last thing i'd like to say uh, and this is probably more of a personal thing um you're all char charitable organizations uh, on this call um from a personal point of view i just really want to say over the last sort of 12 months or we're getting into 12 months ish now uh, i just really want to say a big thank you for for all of you um, and for all the work that you've done and sticking to the cause, because it has been probably the most dreary 12 months and, you know, very sombre and sober statistics you watch on the news every night. Um, this has all been going on where society's need and your beneficiaries' needs has just been going up exponentially. At the same time, you've faced the challenge of your funds probably going down at a 45 degree, if not steeper, angle. 
making the whole environment much more difficult to keep society together. I, I do believe you are the glue of society. So I, I really just want to thank you for everything you've done, sticking to the cause. And I really, really do wish you all the best for the future. And that in some small way, these webinars have helped you achieve what you want to and sometimes need to achieve, unfortunately. Okay. So I just want to say thank you. Okay. Over Great. To well, you, thank Jill. you very much indeed, Angus, uh, for those final words from yourself. And, and that's it. You know, just remember, you can't do everything. So pick off what you can do out there, you say, because I know sometimes it can feel really overwhelming. So pick off what you can do and plan for what you can do in the future. But concentrate on the things that you can do now and plan to do other things. Perhaps you say you can recruit some extra volunteers because I know capacity is such a big issue with smaller charities, especially, but larger charities as well. Uh, but believe in yourself and know that you are making an incredible difference. Without you doing your incredible work in your causes, the world would be not what it is today. I know some of us think the world does need to change, uh, you know, and we want it to change uh, and we want to get out of lockdown and we want to be rid of this virus. But as I say, we're all doing incredible things. So believe in yourself. Be kind to yourself and to other people as well. So thank you all very much indeed. Uh, you say, and all the very, very best as you move forward. So you say thank you and goodbye. The famous Zoom wave. <laughs>